The air gets sharp, a deep, biting cold settles in, and then everything goes quiet. The hum of the fridge is gone. The lights are out. Outside, snow is piling up, pushed by a wind that sounds like it's hunting. Inside, you're in total darkness and a sudden, weird stillness. The grid has failed. For most people, the first reaction is a frantic scramble for flashlights and blankets. It feels like a pain, a major disruption. But as the hours drag on, a deeper, more primal feeling starts to set in. The temperature inside your home is dropping fast, starting to match the frozen world outside. This isn't just an inconvenience anymore. It's a survival situation. And right here is where most people make a critical mistake. A mistake born from a complete misunderstanding of how their own home is now working against them. In this video, we're going to show you the one often overlooked survival act that will keep you warm and alive while others freeze. This isn't about fancy gear or complex gadgets. It's about a simple shift in thinking that could absolutely save your life. The anatomy of a winter disaster, the fatal mistake. So what's the fatal mistake? It's not one single thing, but a total failure of strategy, trying to heat your entire home. It seems like the right thing to do. This is your shelter, right? You light the fireplace, you huddle in the living room, and you wait it out. But modern homes, especially the ones with popular open concept layouts, are built for powerful active heating systems. All that space, those high ceilings and big windows, they just became your worst enemies. Think of your house less like a thermos and more like a sieve. Physics is unforgiving. Heat always moves from warm places to cold places. Every window, every door, every poorly insulated wall is a highway for your precious warmth to escape into the frozen outdoors. A standard double pane window has an R value of about two. For comparison, a properly insulated wall is R13 to R21. Your windows are basically giant thermal holes. So, you light a fire in the fireplace. It feels great. You see the flames, you feel the heat on your face, but here's the brutal reality. Most traditional open hearth fireplaces are shockingly inefficient. They can have an efficiency rating as low as 10%, which means 90% of the heat you generate is going straight up the chimney. And in a cruel twist, that roaring fire is actually making other parts of your house colder by creating a powerful draft, sucking cold air in through every crack it can find. This is when people start getting desperate. The house is still getting colder. Maybe you think about turning on the gas stove for heat. This is a catastrophic and sadly very common error. Using a gas stove or oven to heat your home produces deadly amounts of carbon monoxide, the silent killer. It's a gas with no color and no odor that can knock you out and kill you before you even know you're in danger. Every year, power outages lead to preventable tragedies from people using gas stoves, charcoal grills, or propane heaters indoors without proper ventilation. According to the CDC, more than 400 people in the U.S. die from accidental, non-fire-related carbon monoxide poisoning every year, with a significant number of these deaths occurring during severe weather and power outages. You're fighting a losing battle against the sheer size of your home and the laws of thermodynamics. You're burning through fuel, risking your life with unsafe ideas, and getting colder by the minute. You've made the fatal mistake of defending the whole castle when you should have been fortifying one single survivable room. Section 2. The Overlooked Hack, The Warm Room Doctrine The single greatest hack, the one that flips the entire script on survival, is to abandon the idea of heating your house. Instead, you're going to heat a tiny fraction of it. You're going to create a microenvironment, a warm room. This is the core of the shelter-in-place survival doctrine, and it's your key to making it through a long winter blackout. The idea is simple. It's way easier and more efficient to heat a small, sealed space than a big, open one. By bringing your heat sources, your body heat, and your insulation into one room, you dramatically slow down heat loss and create a space you can actually live in. Step one, choose your room. First, and most important, Pick the right room. This isn't about which room has the best view. 
It's about thermodynamics. You want a small room. The less air you have to heat, the better. If possible, pick a room that isn't surrounded by exterior walls. A room buffered by other rooms will hold heat longer. Basements can be a surprisingly good choice. They might feel cool normally, but the ground acts as natural insulation, often keeping the temperature from dropping below 45 degrees Fahrenheit, which feels a whole lot warmer than a house that's plunged to 20 degrees. Avoid rooms with huge windows or sliding glass doors. A room with a south-facing window can be great for passive solar heat during the day, but it becomes a massive heat sucker at night. A small bedroom, a den, or even a large walk-in closet can be turned into your survival zone. Step 2. Seal the zone. Once you've picked your room, it's time to declare war on drafts. Your mission is to make this room as airtight as you can. Heat doesn't just seep, it flows. First, shut the door and keep it shut. Roll up towels or blankets and jam them against the bottom of the door to block that gap. If you can see light, you've got a leak. Plug it. Next, deal with the windows. They're your biggest liability. Let the sun in during the day if it's shining, but the second it starts to get dark, you need to insulate them. The best way is with layers. Close the blinds. Then hang heavy blankets or comforters over the entire window frame, making sure they touch the floor. You can use nails, tacks, or heavy tape to secure them. For an even better seal, tape plastic sheeting or bubble wrap directly to the window glass and frame. This creates a trapped air layer like improvised double glazing and cuts heat loss significantly. Finally, hunt down any other air leaks. Check electrical outlets and especially any heating vents. Cover the vents. This stops your warm air from being drawn into the cold ductwork. The goal is a static sealed pocket of air. Step 3. Build a fortress of warmth. You have a sealed room. Now you're going to make it even smaller. This is the next level move, building a shelter within your shelter. The most effective way to do this is to set up a tent inside your sealed room. A simple camping tent is a phenomenal heat trap. Your body heat alone will raise the temperature inside that tent by several degrees, often making the difference between shivering uncontrollably and being relatively comfortable. The tent's fabric is just one more barrier trapping the air you've warmed up. No tent? No problem. Build a fort. Drape blankets over a table or between chairs. Create a small enclosed space for your family to gather. Pile pillows and sleeping bags inside. This isn't a game for kids. It's a proven survival technique. Multiple bodies huddled in a small space share and conserve a massive amount of heat. Also, get off the cold floor. Putting down layers of cardboard, newspapers, or extra blankets under your sleeping bags creates a thermal break, stopping the ground from stealing your body heat. By following these three steps, pick a small room, seal it tight, and build a shelter inside it, you've completely changed the game. You're no longer trying to heat a house. You're just trying to keep a space the size of a tent warm. That's a battle you can actually win. Generating safe heat in your fortress. Now that you have your fortress, you need to bring in some safe heat. And safe is the key word. With this strategy, you need way less heat to be effective so you can be smart about it. The Terracotta Pot Heater, a DIY radiator. You've probably seen this online. It's not a magic energy creator, but it is a clever way to turn the direct flame of candles into a more gentle, radiant heat. However, fire officials have issued serious warnings because if you're not careful, they are a major fire hazard. Here's how to build one as safely as possible. You need a metal pan, a few tea light candles, and two unglazed terracotta pots of different sizes. First, place four or five tea lights in your metal pan spaced out. This is critical to prevent the melted wax from pooling together and igniting in a big flare-up, which is a huge fire risk. Next, prop the smaller pot upside down over the candles, raised slightly on some small rocks to allow airflow. The candles need oxygen. Finally, cover the drainage hole of that smaller pot, then place the larger pot upside down over the smaller one. The science is simple. The candles heat the air trapped inside, which then heats the clay pots. The pots then radiate that heat out slowly. 
The surface can get incredibly hot, over 270 degrees Fahrenheit, so inside your small 10, it can make a real difference. Critical safety rules. Never, ever leave this thing unattended. Keep it on a stable, non-flammable surface far from your blankets or tent walls. The pots get hot enough to cause severe burns, so don't touch them. And most importantly, you must have a working battery-operated carbon monoxide detector right there in your sealed room. While tea lights produce minimal CO, any flame in an enclosed space demands this precaution. Your body is the primary furnace. Don't forget, your most reliable furnace is your own body. The trick is trapping its heat. That means layers, layers, layers. Wear multiple loose layers of clothing. The air between each layer is a fantastic insulator. Start with a base layer that wicks away sweat, like wool or synthetics, not cotton. Cotton gets wet, stays wet, and makes you cold. Add a fleece or wool mid-layer, and don't forget a warm hat, gloves, and thick wool socks. You lose a ton of heat from your head, hands, and feet. Passive heat sources. You can also make passive radiators. Heat up soapstone blocks or even regular stones near a safe heat source, like a wood stove if you have one. Wrap them in towels and bring them into your tent. They'll radiate warmth for hours. If you see the outage coming, heat water on the stove while you still have gas. Pour it into sturdy water bottles and you've got personal bed warmers. The Essentials for Your Survival Zone Life in your warm room is about more than just heat. You need your other key supplies right there with you. Light without fire. A candle's flicker is nice, but candles are a top cause of house fires during blackouts. They get knocked over easily, especially in a cramped space. Your main lights should be battery-powered or hand-crank LED lanterns and headlamps. A headlamp is a game-changer because it keeps your hands free. LEDs are efficient, last forever, and have zero fire risk. Water and food. You have to stay hydrated, even when it's cold. Cold air is dry air, and you lose a lot of water just by breathing. Have a stash of bottled water in your room. If your pipes are frozen and you need to purify water from another source, like melted snow, boiling it for one minute is the most reliable method. For food, think no cook and high calorie. Your body is burning extra fuel to stay warm, so this is the time for energy bars, nuts, dried fruit, and canned goods you can eat cold. And remember, keep your fridge and freezer doors shut. A closed fridge will keep food safe for about 4 hours, and a full freezer can last up to 48 hours. Information and Communication in a blackout, information is a lifeline. A battery-powered or hand-crank radio will get you emergency broadcasts and updates on when power might be back. Keep your phones charged as long as you can with pre-charged power banks, but don't count on them. Cell towers might be down. Finally, and this is non-negotiable, make sure you have a working smoke detector and a carbon monoxide detector with fresh batteries right there inside your warm room. Especially if you're using any kind of flame for heat or light, this is your essential safety net. Surviving a winter blackout isn't about being miserable, it's about being smart. By creating a warm room, you go from being vulnerable to being in control. You can turn a potentially lethal disaster into a manageable, though maybe uncomfortable, adventure. What's your number one winter survival tip? Share it in the comments below. Your advice could be the thing that helps someone else stay safe. And if you found this video valuable, please share it with your friends and family. Preparing together is the best way to make sure everyone you care about is ready for whatever comes. The fatal mistake is thinking your whole house is your shelter. The life-saving hack is realizing your true shelter is a small, defensible space that you create yourself. It's about working with the laws of physics, not fighting against them. Block the drafts, build a blanket fort, layer your clothes, and use safe heating methods. By concentrating your resources, you can serve the most important thing you have, your own body heat. The power might be out, but with this knowledge, you have the power to protect yourself and your family, staying warm and alive until the lights come back on. Stay prepared and stay safe.